Geek Dad Life presents Toy Geeks Live Toy Talk Show. Well, we saw high-res images of these new origin-style TMNT figures, and ew, it doesn't look good. We're going to talk about all of that and more tonight on Toy Geeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks. My name is Jay, and with me tonight are dear friends from Mondo Toys. Please give a warm returning welcome to Peter and Hector. Hey. Hello, gentlemen. What's up, dude? Evening. How's welcome it going? Welcome. Uh, it goes. It goes on a on a Sunday. I was in Philadelphia this morning, and I flew back to Raleigh today. Had a fun Philly adventure yesterday. Hello. How long is that flight? Uh, from Raleigh, it's like 50 minutes. Oh, that's not bad. No. That's, yeah. I, I mean... Hector, where are you? Where are you about in the? I'm in I'm in Cal I'm in Southern California. Yeah, over uh, by San Diego. And so I grew up in San Diego, and I go to San Diego at least once a year. Mm-hmm. And something I love about the East Coast is you can get to just about anywhere up to the Mississippi within about an hour, hour and a half. Right, Peter? Like you can get to anywhere pretty quick. I'm in Miami. I'm no oh, never mind. You're talking Most about yeah, people. No, he's, at the, he's at the bottom of the yeah, exactly the world, man. That's I, did you watch Roadhouse? It's pretty much that. I watched Roadhouse this weekend, actually. Yeah. Not, yeah. not the new the one. New one? Oh, the no. new one is what I'm talking about. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. The best one. By the way, uh, this conversation is the dad in Geek Dad Life. So there you go. You, you nailed just, it. How long is that flight? Well, I just, I love how Raleigh, I can get to New York within an hour. Yeah. I can get to Chicago in an hour and a half. I can get to Florida in an hour and a half, two hours by yeah, that's, flight. I'm kind of jealous. That's pretty, um, that's pretty good. Right. You can kind of get yeah. to five hour, six hour flight to go to Miami. Exactly. Yeah. You're kind of, you're stuck there. can get there. to Orlando um, in four hours. Um, <laughs> driving. That's it. Uh, but even drives, I can drive to New York under eight hours. I can drive to Nashville under eight hours. I can drive to Chicago maybe. Now he's just hours. rubbing it in. Um. Anyway, hello, gentlemen. Good to have you here tonight. What's going on? Um. Big week for y'all with uh, the the Tila finally hitting the the online. So we're definitely going to dig into that. Yeah. Um. Hard to do this show without talking about these uh, turtle uh, images that Pixel Dan got from uh playmates uh this past week so we're gonna we're talk with that about that we're talking about the tila talk about toy collector uh announcing um some sweet uh, uh, uh cowboys of move Mu- mesa figures i saw that um which those is look great right? i saw those yeah i saw those is that cool. so? uh i think so right i have to look at it again if blake's here you can say they have cornered the market on like the the franchises you're like man if somebody would just right dot, dot, dot. yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like they're hitting all these little nostalgia points of of even properties. I totally forgot about that show. Come oh on. my yeah. god, those toys, toys were so good. Yeah, and I saw the toys, the images, and I was like, "Wow, these are yeah. crazy." It's it's one of those things where I always knew it because of the video game. Um, oh really? Remember, they had a similar um, beat 'em up like turtles, but it was Cowboys of Moo Mesa. And a uh, friend of of the channel Gary is a diehard Cowboys of Moo Mesa fan, so I was just like. Gary's in heaven uh, because he's finally getting Cowboys of Moo Mesa figures. I'll take what, what was that yeah. other show? Mummies. Mummies Alive. Alive. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the few remaining. That's the one. That's 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 like, that's like, that's that in, uh, what was it? Brave Star? Is that what, what Brave was Star. Yeah. I mean, a couple kind of third party uh, yeah. peeps have been tapping. Yeah. Brave there's some Star customs, customs for Brave Star out there. Um, Brian Volk Weiss is like that meme, like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, we awesome. have a couple uh, uh, big anniversaries. Member for 20 months, Flash, our theory member for 20 months. Thank you so much. Allison Troy, member for 30 months. Uh, I don't know if you all have been watching our Derek Dazelle, 17 months. Uh, thank you so much for being members. Um, but uh, uh, Matt Hatter was co-hosting the past few weeks, part of promoting. He hasn't uh, been his, online in a while. Well, uh, yeah, right? Hopefully, <laughs> like, he's taken it easy yeah. this past week post uh, Flip War. Hitting 200,000. Very happy for him. Um, But he gifted, like, a billion people on this channel memberships. So uh, a lot awesome. more family members uh, now, Jace, four months. Uh, but let's say hello to the chat. It's hopping, as always. I'll roll it back to Daniel K., Fakewood Table, Ginger, Jedi, Dorlax, who's faded one. Matt Bush, the legendary Matt Bush, Doomed Hug, 80s Toys, Rabbit McGavin, Mike Moen, Evo Genius, King Panther. That's a pretty nice looking flock Panther there. I wonder I like who it. 
Who brought that one into the world? Tony Taylor Toys, Clint Sains, Spaded One, KJ Smith, uh, Blair Bass, Justin Moen, uh, Kenner Vader, Mecha Man Blade in the house, uh, Frankie Rivera, uh, Toy Sorceress, Mint with Cards, Sculpt, Viper, Tommy, Toy Geekasaurus, Quip, Rock Nerd Radio, Alpha Magnus in the house, uh, Rick Capabianco, J Mac, James Vinipole, Ray Alonzo, uh, let's see, Hanny Mefty, and Brian Brink, Master of the Charts, uh, Gage Bullock, Frankie Rivera Comics, and so many more. Thank you, everybody, for coming to hang out and talk toys tonight. Um, all right, gentlemen. First of all, Hector, is this a new rumor? I feel like the last summer, I don't know if I had this wall of fantastic Safubi behind you. Wall of Safubi. Yeah. No, I mean, it's basically the same office. I just turned my desk around and added another shelf behind me. <laughs> nice. You, 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 uh, like, I feel like all of us that, that do live streams for any period of time, eventually, because I think usually we set up our desk to look at our collection. Yeah. Right. And, and then we, <laughs> we do this enough, like, I don't want like a boring door or something <laughs> behind me. So you shift the desk. Exactly. Yeah. Just shift it over. I mean, I have like there's stuff all around me at this point. So, well, um, I think the final form you need to take, and it's something that Peter and I clearly have, is some type of lighting, some type of yeah, you know, yeah. to kind of accentuate uh, what's going on behind you. I think yeah, that's the ambience. You know, the you guys, you guys got it all going. It's back. sexy over here. Yeah, it's uh, it's you got the mood. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I just have bright. Yeah, but Jay, it's also like hospital light right yeah now. but it's also at lunchtime over where he is like like it like it's not oh, like that's yeah, i mean it's still the, the sun is, hasn't even set so yeah. kids are playing in the yard yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? you know, dogs are out running around <laughs> dogs and cats yeah. oh my goodness all right well let's uh, jump into the the lead story here tonight um and it looks like zach's aren't you supposed to be in bed <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah. he's probably in the suitcase or no your backpack he's in your backpack I, I just uh, I don't know. He's got to be upstairs somewhere. Look in your bed. You got it. <laughs> uh, we went to the Liberty Bell. I don't know if you saw his cool little colonial. Oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't on screen. <laughs> oh, it wasn't? Okay. Well, anyway. Um, all right. Uh, let's take a look at these images. So, uh, well, What's the story here? Like, Hector and I, believe it or not, have been off uh, okay. the toy news, so we have no so, idea what's going a on. A couple weeks ago um because uh, there was that toy show or whatever that there was a little picture announcing like a convention or something like an expo yeah it was like a toy fair kind of thing okay. so it wasn't a public thing but uh playmates like lifted whatever their not banned but you know uh embargo embargo to share. and so i believe toy shiz or or somebody like that shared the image on like instagram right okay. um and it was basically announcing remastered 88 tmnt figures okay which a lot of us who have been you know pining for wishing for a motu origins equivalent turtles line um mm -hmm. were kind of you know shouting from the mountaintops it's finally here they finally did it they're giving us you know uh old school playmate style toys uh, in the larger or, or in the origin style, highly articulated uh, scale. Okay. Um, so they're but, like articulate. They, I saw that they're like have like uh, articulated like uh, elbows. They're bigger. Uh, no, they're they're about the same uh, okay. size. Um, but uh, the but basically they kind of look like origins TMNT okay. figures. Okay. So all of us, you know on the internet we're like hey is it finally happening um i'm looking for it online so i can see so uh pixel dan mm -hmm. who we all know legendary toy tuber godfather of toy tubing um, <laughs> I would real, say. Right? He, he pretty much is the godfather yeah uh, I, I mean he was the first person i watched on youtube to talk about toys um like maybe even pre-google youtube i don't know it, it, early days of youtube um uh, uh, reached out to Playmates and uh, they sent him a high res image of of these turtles. And so that's what we're looking at here. Yes, this is what we're looking at here. And um, the problem uh, with them 
or at least in the grainy image was people like why why does the the uh, texture look all um kind of you know i don't know riveted or like they have the measles or chicken pox scars or something um but it's like well let's we'll wait for the high res images you know maybe it won't maybe it won't be that bad uh once we once we can see the high res images well they send the high res images and they don't look so hot um and so a lot of us are questioning now like what what was the strategy going into the sculpts uh, of these turtle figures because i just i don't know kind of what they were going for in terms of look like there's a lot here to like but now that we see them up close we have this those faces are cool though <laughs> Right, like there's it. There's yeah, good I mean, I love, stuff. I love the sculpts and I love yeah. the faces and like the 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 joints look really rad too. Yeah, um, and they like they'll stand up more straight. Yep. It reminds me of the texture from the movie Turtles, the first time they came out when I was a kid. Yes. Yep. And I think perhaps um, those were like a rubberized material. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, they were softer. They were softer, softer. back in the day. Yeah, and, they had and, that. They. they felt fantastic like they yes. have like those little ball joints like, oh, yeah. absolutely. I, thought, shoulders, I thought right? those were the classiest yeah um the, it could that might as well have been hot toys action figures at the time in yeah. the 90s right like oh there was, yeah that was like pre mcfarland era yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. like i i thought it was uh, so they somehow you know pulled action figures off the screen and made them into uh, into something i could buy and hold um and so i have seen that comparison um and i was gonna say that probably uh the texture on those were more were less reflective maybe because it was like that rubbery material yes. i would say looking at these i i think the the idea behind them is like how do we make them you know a higher resolution right like sure. update them contemporary i like when i get turtle figures that have some texture on them so I, I i get the idea it might just be it could be a photography thing you know i would encourage Hey, as somebody who works at a toy company <laughs> and and f has photos go up early and people sometimes jump the gun on things, uh, I would strongly encourage uh, to, to hang on because there's a lot of steps that go through even from the time a photo goes up to when it's in your hand. And, um, and there's a lot of people involved in those decisions and things like that. So I, and it's also if you if I'm looking at them on the screen here, like these are gigantic compared to what they'll be in my hand. Sure. And so yeah, these are gonna be the standard turtle size, right? Right. You know? Yes. About so five point five. What are they? Like six five. inches? Six six point five? Around five, probably. Oh, yeah. around the five, turtles yeah. were scaled smaller too than the yeah. human figures. Right. Because right, so. you want the villains. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger. My guess would be that when you have these in hand, it'll work. My guess, right? And that's because. Mm -hmm. We've met a lot of the people at uh, Playmates, super nice people, great sculptors, and I know that their heads are in the right place when it comes to stuff like this. So my guess, not having seen these in person, is that when you get these in hand at the right scale, stuff that looks crazy may be blown up, high mm -hmm. res on our big screen TVs or monitors will actually look normal and 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 probably – like feel good tactile, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think something that what I normally look at is something like you, you can see like the, the texture on the, on the bricks, mm -hmm. right? Like how, you, you know, right here in these images, it looks like those bricks have like giant cracks in them, right? Like in between mm -hmm. here. And it's about the same scale as the, as the pores or, you know, things that they were trying to go for. I think like a scale kind of like texture that they're going for. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think what you know, I, what Peter's saying is probably probably right. It's like once you get these in hand at five inches tall, like and and there, it's not. It's gonna probably read a lot different. I yeah, mean, when we're sculpting like stuff and in ZBrush, and we we up to texture so high, um, just because the translation going from three D print to molding to uh, you know finely injected pieces, you lose a little bit of resolution like tiny little bit every single step yeah so you know you know these could be 3d prints they could be i, I don't know but um you know I, I i don't you know i think maybe once once they're you know get them in hand that'll probably be a lot less um 
intense than what you were probably seeing. <laughs> we can before. only hope, right? Like, is that – that's what I was going to ask, especially for you all as, you know, people that execute sculpts generally fairly well. Like, I would say the only times – you all have kind of courted controversy is usually around some type of like weird QC issue or, or something like that. In general, no, he's people... going to bring up old shit. Great. Well, no, I'm just saying, or, or, you know, I'm just trying to think of three... forces fall off and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, or I don't, or it's just yeah, like, oh, yeah. this is too expensive or no, something. It happens. But, it happens. But generally people praise your sculpts. And I guess my question is like, how, like what, what is that? Is it, is this a disconnect in maybe what they rendered in ZBrush, so maybe what ended up on the final product, or or is this just a weird transitionary um, uh, image that maybe it's ch you're saying it could be chiller once once it's in yeah. hand. I think I think the intense lighting on these figures, I think the size that you're seeing them on monitors and TVs, um, all that has something to do with it, you know. And um, I would I would just look may, when they came up when they come out, they may or may not be for every collector, but I would just hold on. Uh, I know that's crazy on a on an internet show. Just <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? Yeah, but like for example, I saw someone. I don't want out, reasoned responses, Peter. Yeah. No. You cannot be reasonable. But I saw someone uh, call out the color of like Donatello's band uh, bandanas being like more of a blue purple, for example. Sure. That's another thing. I would just hold off. Like 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 those subtle things in the, in the color of figures can change when they're in hand, and it's just a subtle change, you know, so that they don't have to like announce a change or anything, and it'll just be right when you get it. I'm just saying that as someone who's been collecting figures forever, back when I was looking at them in Toy Fair magazine, and uh, and then you know noticing then when they came out, you know things that I was apprehensive about were actually great in person or the opposite you know i remember the first time i saw the the 2000x figures announced i was like what is this the, the for motu excuse me and then they ended up being one of my favorite lines of all time so it's like i get it i get it it's also different you know we've seen we've had the same turtles essentially done and redone hundreds of times at this point and so when there's a, a drastic change of any kind it can be like jarring but I don't know. I think the same thing happened when we saw the mutant mayhem designs. Like a lot of us were like, what the heck? And he's got braces and this. And now <laughs> I love those designs so much. You know, like those, I, those designs really grew on me. And, and yeah, yeah. I, and I think there's a lot to love in this too. I mean, you know, just speaking from, you know, objectively here, you know, I love that they've added, like, it looks like actual chains. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. The Michelangelo's yeah. like nunchucks there. Which is pretty cool, right? Like a, it's a it's something new. Like the um, I like the how the how they sculpted the all the elbow um, pads and the knee pads and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. There's some cool uh, things there. Like I noticed someone mentioned. I at first glance I would not know this, but I'm noticing some people mentioned that the Donnie and the Leo heads yeah, are swapped. So they're oh, swapped. Yeah. They're swapped. Uh, so if if this is a a vintage remaster the the vintage donny uh, or the vintage leo had the kind of small mouth and can i say something opening. about that jay please who cares <laughs> can we all calm down i mean like the idea how is that, dare you, you know, peter <laughs> let's, let's have a real moment here for a minute who cares like seriously, like we're talking like it's not like Leo's incapable of making that expression and Donatello the other one. It's a separate line. It's a separate okay. line. I'll tell okay. you what. Thank Playmates right now. And I'll tell you why. You ready? Uh-huh. Because when you get these and you put them on your shelf next to the other ones, the original ones, whatever it is, and your significant other or friend or family member comes in and goes, Why do you need a, a seventh version of this? Why do you need a and you can say, look, look, you might think it's the same figure, but they swap the heads. You know, maybe you're not paying attention. Maybe you don't have a discerning eye, but a real collector would know. So you're welcome. All right. Okay. That's that's fair. Uh always trying to find the angle there. I appreciate that, Hector. Okay. And then the, the last big critique of these is the swivel feet, no rocker ankles. Um I think, you know, maybe this is a cost cutting move. I mean, you all have to deal with articulation uh, and things like that with your figures that you, you design. Um, what what goes into a decision like that? Like it, it is uh, a, a swivel versus a rocker. 
Could this be an engineering reason? Maybe they stand up better. Tur at least vintage turtles are notorious for falling over all the damn time. Um, so what's uh, what could be a reason for the swivel cuts here? Peter, you got a reason? I mean, I I, <laughs> I, I, I think I think that it's probably a structural thing is, yeah. is, is, is my best guess. In it's order to get them to, to be order. able to pose at all the poses people are going to want. Now, this is another thing that I've noticed. I'm going to put on my collector hat again. Yeah. I came from the McFarlane figures, right? Movie Maniacs were like my first – the first figure line that has a – I guess an adult collecting figures that I had to have every one was movie maniacs. And there was like no articulation in those. Yeah. I loved it because at the time I'm like, man, it, it's like so immersive. It's so realistic. And then when I would look at things like, and I loved these figures. So don't before the comments come for me, the toy biz Marvel legends, right? Mm -hmm. They were like super articulated and they were amazing. But I, I kept thinking, I wish we didn't have to see those joints. So I'm the guy who used to love, no articulation breaks. But then mm -hmm. I notice online there's a lot of collectors who are like, there's only 47 points of articulation. Like, and then so people really want to pose, you know. So I get that. So I think something like this, yeah, it breaks the sculpt. But to me, all articulation points break a sculpt, all of them. So, you know, at, at that point, it's like, you know, for some people it might be too far. For some people, it might be like, now I can get the pose I want. You know, mm -hmm. but I would say if it bothers you, it's one of those things. And again, as somebody who has uh, like, look, one of my favorite figures, dude, right here. I have it on hand. Is this oh, Swamp Thing uh, Comic Con exclusive? Yep, I got him right over here. You have him. You you know why I love it so much? Because it got these seamless joints, and yeah. it's like a rubberized skin, and it's ratcheted. That's great for me. And these these things right here, where I see the joint, I'm like, ah, I wish I, I wish we could have had the whole thing seamless, right? right? But if it bothers you, you pose it in a way that, like, I don't know, disguises the figure. It's at the end of the day. It's also I don't know what the price point is on these, but I would assume. I there think I think we got confirmation it was fourteen ninety nine I believe. So they're in that still like that play with me range. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's the other thing I'm thinking when I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I I think you know overall. You know, I, I did want to please. mention too, like it's you know articulation. You know, for us, we we definitely always have like when when I'm doing articulation, for example, or you know someone that we work with or whatever. Um, it's always a fine balance of trying to find that like how do you keep that statuesque and the silhouette present? Right. And are you okay with the articulation looking a little funky in order to, at some point when you pose it straight on, it still maintains a good silhouette. And I think with these, I think that, you know, I can't speak for anyone, but it sounds, it looks like it could have been, that could have been the case because when you look at them from straight on, like they look really cool. Mm -hmm. Like the ankles look great. Right from you yeah. can see it in Raph's uh, right foot and Leo. Leo's, and yeah. There. Um, and so it does hold its form and silhouette nicely. Uh, and then, you know, then they decided to add a joint there for the added, you know, movement. And it breaks the form a little bit. But I think at, at the same time, when you pose it, you know, straight on how it's supposed to be, you, you have a perfect silhouette, whereas you're not breaking the form in that sense. And that's something we struggle with all the time. Like, how do you, how do you not, how do you keep one, like when you just pose it straight on, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do you keep it looking really cool, almost like a statue or almost like a, like the McFarlane toys, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, allowing the articulation to, uh, you know, obstruct your, your silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's also again like I was saying before, at twelve ninety nine they're saying like Yeah. At that so that's price point, Pixel Dan, twelve Yeah. So like, you know, especially now that we're in this world where there's, there's a figure of ev anything for everyone at every price point, essentially. It feels like now that you know Nacelle's literally putting every blank spot and checking them off, like you have to realize that that you know, at some point I mean the best example was Comic Con exclusives of Mutant Mayhem. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like how they were essentially the same sculpts at what was at Target, but the paint was a little nicer, a little more detailed, and then it was a, a more expensive figure. So like I, I just for me, you keep that in mind, like that that when you're when you're critiquing, it's like every price point, every level services a certain you know, customer base, and the demands of that customer base are different, you know. Well, um, I, and and that's where I think this is where it comes from, like my final opinion about these is i think the price point 
is great at twelve ninety nine price point. Does that include the bases too? I believe that's crazy. so. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Crazy. That's awesome. That's um, so uh, don't get used to those prices, people. <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> right, where we go talk about our stuff. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it's like, forget everything. You <laughs> could buy all of these, and it still doesn't get close. <laughs> well, in fairness, I think they're probably making a hell of a lot more of these too. Than, yeah, uh, probably. Than probably. probably. Um, uh, Blake, we definitely want you around when we get into uh, Moon Mesa, my friend. Um, but uh, it, it, I think the the, the Buy or pass on these for me will be how that skin texture does look in real life. Because mm-hmm. I get what you all are saying that, you know, it's the high res images. These could be like the first 3D prints and the tra- that doesn't translate so well. And that's 100 percent true. Like I've seen that. We've seen that in all sorts of figures, depending on when the it was a paint master or the final like production figure. Um, yeah, you, you really don't know till you get it in hand. And I think um, shiny plastic people. Uh, Chris said, uh, and I'm kind of taking this as well. I need to see him in person before any decisions are made because I think the price point is right. The head swap thing doesn't bother me so much. I agree, Peter. It's like kind of a whatever, but it's, it's a little inaccuracy. It seems like an easy thing that could have been done. But maybe right, it's intentional. It it, maybe it is. I, I don't know. Because um, you know, you never know when you're behind the scenes on these things. You're sure. like, you know, maybe, like, like we've had moments where like, ah, oh, let's let's do something a little different. Let's push this way. And then some, one of us will be like, uh, you know, this might not be the moment to, to take a liberty, you know, and you never know until it comes out, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is it is the tough thing when you're playing it with nostalgia and it's annoying. Um, and I and you all have to feel this at different times when yeah. when you are a creative steward mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that has a lot of fans that have grown up with this thing that you're trying mm-hmm. to create. And threading that needle of pushing it forward while also trying to hit all of those nostalgia points that somebody is looking for. And and sometimes mm-hmm. it works. Uh, like, uh, I think your Orco looks amazing. You showed his face when nobody else ever shown it before. Um, but I, I don't, did you get any sad comments about like, oh, you ruined every my time. Did you get e- Jay, every time. Yeah. Jay, every oh, time. Yeah. Jay, every time. We saw so many crazy comments about that Orco head. Like, oh, put it back. Put it back. How dare yeah. you show his face? And the whole time we were making it, and, and, you know, and I'm making this thing and like, you know, talking to the designer and all this stuff. It's like, we've no one's ever seen Orco's face. This yeah. is going to be fucking cool. Yeah. People are yeah. going to be so excited. And, and for the most part, they were. But then yeah. we definitely had some of those people being like, why would you do this? Why would you show Orko's <laughs> face? How dare you? And it's like, how you showing Orko's legs? It's like, how dare you? It's like he has fabric clothing. What are you? What are we supposed to do? Make him like? Yeah. I have no to- no lower torso. Like you had, we had to create new things in order to work within the stylization we were going for, right? Yeah. And you know, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a fine line, you know. We, you know, I think everybody just kind of tries their best, and 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 yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, I would like, like, I think that comment was great. And I, Jay, I think your point is excellent. Wait till they come out and see them in hand. I do think things like this are the new era of toy collecting where there's such scrutiny at every step of the way that never existed in the past. Uh, I'll say that for my money, when we're producing figures, you know, like we have the sketch stays and then we phase, we have the, the preliminary early sculpt phase and, and then a 3d print gets printed out and then it's painted. And sometimes we show painted 3d prints at conventions, but it isn't until the, the final materials with the final actual factory paint that I, even for our own work, do I go, that's it. Yeah. There's something changes. Like yeah. there's, there's a, there's a, oh, so there's much a, changes. You have to take into account, like once you're, when you're staring at something on a screen or whatever, and, and then it's, even it's going through probably the- a slippery slope as well to like be at like two stages to the end. Like we did it. High five. Go home, folks. No more work to be done here. Cause right. then, it's, yeah. Cause then it's just production in and of itself requires so much. It's, it's, I, I always say like the pre-production part of it, this, the, the um, sketch phase, right? The concept art phase, the sculpting stage, the paint master, the 3D prints, that's only half the battle. The other half is like making sure the manufacturer, you know, because they change things all the time. Like they, they will get your figure and they're gonna be like, okay, how do we make this more efficient? <laughs> like in order for yeah. us to be able to uh, adjust joints and, and, and make, you know, part lines here and that, and you have to manage all of that. So it's, uh, it's, yeah. 
yeah, it can be pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. And, and, and you, you don't, we, you never know when, like we show prototypes at Comic Con and conventions all the time, right? And sometimes the final product looks different just because it had to go through that that whole yeah. mm -hmm. 50% that we didn't even get to yeah. by the time we showed it. Yeah. You know, and, and I and I also want to say, look, I'm all obviously being a little tongue in cheek with all this, but I will say this. If if you're unhappy with something that someone puts out, please know that no one's trying to screw with collectors. No one's trying mm -hmm. to mess with that. At the end of the day, think of this, okay? Even if you know, whoever making the business decision to X company at the end of the day, their selfish goal, if they were completely selfish and disregarding any consumer, right. Is to make the most they can make off a product. So if they put something out that they think is not going to please the audience, they're shooting themselves in the foot ahead of the start. So you, at, at least for people out there, you should know that it could be that someone takes a chance that doesn't resonate with you. That's always possible. But I, I would I of everybody I've met in this business, and I've met a ton of them just in the past couple of years. Everybody is literally going, man, I can't believe we're so lucky that we get to work on this and do that. And and I hope people are excited when they see this. It's not always going to connect, but it doesn't mean that the that the intentions or or I just see some comments out there that I'm like, I would just want to clarify that. The, the people working on this stuff, it's a hard job. So, you know, to, to do it, it's because they love it and they want to do it. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. my kid's going to love these. <laughs> yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, for twelve ninety nine, it's a great price. And, and, and if I go yeah. to my son, he's going to be, he's going to flip out. Now, no one's complaining about the change, the biggest change I see here. What's that? Where are my brown weapons? Oh, you're right. We got some. some... And everyone just let that go right yeah. Unknown. Yeah, start a whole I mean, other discourse here, man. Yeah, the size <laughs> are a little are oversized. Uh, no, no, uh, no. Let me let me post in some comments here. Yeah. Mike has two dollar super chat. Images may not reflect final butterface. Um, I love this one by Brian Brink. Uh, I guess this was just a poor <laughs> choice for the deco. Uh, bravo, Brian. Uh, Ted Biaselli, grandmother had better ankles. Uh, shiny plastic. <laughs> I did that one. Uh, brick something. Uh, it's less about breaking the sculpt for me and the need for ankle rocker versus swivel feet that don't actually do anything. Mm. Um, uh, obsessive compulsive gamer again, heads and feet, not a big deal. That skin though. Uh, and then Johnny Cock. I'm going to use my more than 1299 for the Mondo vinyl figures of TMNT. They're a little uh, and then uh, Johnny Cock also. Hi, Jay Waves. Thanks, Hector and Peter, for my prize from the Collect All Monsters anniversary episode. Nice. My, my sister's place in Rom. <laughs> mini fridge. I thought my bro in law bought a mini uh, fridge thing. Oh, so you got the, uh, Johnny, you oh. got the, the statue. The Tokyo SOS, yeah. The Tokyo SOS statue. Yeah, that, that box is basically a mini fridge. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's um, great. Uh, Jace says, I think the big issue may be if Playmates will continue this beyond the brothers. They don't have a great track record, uh, track record for going deep on new releases lately. Um, and then Soulcraft says maybe they will do a running change of the heads. Uh, again, I think we'll have to wait and see how these actually mm -hmm. look in final uh, when we get them. And Jace, I think that is my biggest thing here. Like, it, it's it's rare for a toy company to do what Mattel did with Motu Origins is still doing with Motu Origins, just giving us so many figures and so many different characters. Um, it's kind of unprecedented in terms of like doing a nostalgia influenced toy line that is also appealing to kids in, in some That's way. tough. It's That's it's a incredible fine line to walk. Um it, it really, really is. But the turtles um, are doing great. My niece, who's like not even five, like when those mutant mayhem designs came out, she was like beside herself for those. And I was so happy because I'm like, Phew, at least I have something I can relate to her on it when she gets a little older, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but it's, 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 it's good. You know, I give playmates a heck of a lot of credit for putting out the recent re what, what, what was the name for the remake, the repackaged ones or the original ones? Was there like a, an official name for like the I retro or retro? So I got my first ever TMNT figure I ever had was Michelangelo. And so I I have a sealed in package Raphael. Mm -hmm. And I had always wished that I had a sealed in package Michelangelo. So I got a chance to have one, even though it's not yeah. the real one. But it was yeah. awesome. 
And they went deep in that line. They did Genghis Frog. They did uh, Wayne. Oh, they, they're still putting the stuff out there. Oh, I mean, they're, yeah. they're at Target shelves right now. I guess my question to you, Peter, is are you, were you soft head elite? So 100%. Are you kidding me? I was there. I bought my first turtles. All my turtles were soft heads. In fact, the one that I have sealed in package is a soft head. That's that's wow. uh, that's pretty good because I I've, mine was uh, a soft head Mikey as well, and I have a package soft head Mikey. No shit. Back when you could buy them for like twenty dollars. That's, that's how much I paid for mine. Twenty dollars yeah. at a, yeah. at a convention in Orlando. Uh, I think I got mine on eBay in like two thousand and four or something like that. Recent. Um, but uh, uh, Hector, were you soft head elite or are, are you even like clued into the soft head thing? I remember the soft head thing, but I don't know too much of what you guys are referencing. The heads, the heads, uh, the, heads the first squishy, wave right? were squishy, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the first year, but only yeah. the 1988. Yeah. You know what it was? I didn't like it too much because the paint looked different. Oh, they were okay. cheaper, it was lesser quality paint. Lesser quality plastic. Um, it didn't have the same shine as the rest of the body. No, it didn't. No. I love so it. When, prefer the, when, it. The, when the other ones came out, I remember. I remember this now. Yeah, I remember even at that age being like, "Oh, this head looks like the body. I like this more." Yeah, yeah. I have um, friends like that too who preferred those. And uh, but it's just one of those things. Like you, you were in the early, the front lines of of turtle collecting. If you as a kid had the soft heads, that means you got them. The first year they came out, yeah, Middle, we were hipster turtle. Was collectors. Splinter a soft head too? Yes, they were yeah. all. Yeah. all I, had the, I specifically remember the Splinter one having, yeah, having the soft head. I remember my brother and I would chew on them a little bit when we were uh, watching. Shredder, Shredder had the the soft yep. head also. Yeah, all, I had that one as well. Yeah, with the soft head. I remember all except the the foot soldier. To chip. Oh, the foot soldier never had a soft head. Foot soldier has a hard head, but the way you can tell if he is an '88 release. Is on the back. It says "Made in Macau" and not uh, "Was a hot oh. or whatever it went to. Oh, you're opening up a whole new a, a section of my brain that I thought that I had completely just pushed away. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, Bebop had a soft head also. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. Did. Yeah, yeah they all, like, all all did. They some all of them did, did. You know, now I want to walk back a little. I liked Bebop's soft head and yeah. Splinter's soft head, mm -hmm. but the turtles, yeah, it yeah. kind of bugged me that the colors were kind of off. We gotta do a variant for our vinyl figs that has a squishy head. Yeah, squishy, yeah, squishy head. Hard head too. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's uh, it, it this the the squishing them to get different facial expressions. Yeah, and best. now you don't have to because they just swapped them for you. See? <laughs> Come on. Hold on, I gotta. There we go. That's what I'm here for. Bravo. There was a Peter was Peter's right comment back a while ago. You can just leave that one. There's up. a couple Peter's right uh, yeah, comments yeah, yeah. in there. Yeah, a couple of Peter's a dumb dumb comments too. No. They all even out in Leave. the watch. I'm <laughs> Locked man hammer. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's let's move on uh, to something that you all uh, are, are yeah. doing right now. And and as far as I know, people are really loving it. No uh, no critiques on Tila's pores, as as far as I know uh on on the internet uh but as of right now and uh i'll put your the link here too in the chat if you all haven't done it yet but right now people you can uh put your orders in for right it's live right now through oh through yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah um scale uh one six scale tila timed edition and we saw her at was it decon for the first time yep it was decon um and now you can put your orders in for them uh i guess walk us through this figure because this one has been highly anticipated for a long time and it was one that i even think it like your power con panel you all talked about like the uh, almost kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier with the turtles like the, this was a laborious process to like get this figure right like walk us through that yeah um i mean this figure is it was one of those where we had the concept art or part of the concept art from even back, like I would say five years ago. And it just kind of kept being put on the back burner, not because we didn't want to tackle, you know, it's Tila, which is, you know, super memorable and famous character from Motu, but uh, we just, there was other characters to get to first. Right. And, and we had to um, really get like the whole, the, her proportions, right. The sculpt, mm -hmm. right. Everything. Um, and you know, when, when we finally revisited, uh, the concept part, we added the snake, uh, armor and the 2000 X head and stuff like that. 
So, um, and then, yeah, the sculpt process took, it took a minute because we, it, it, we were really trying to nail like a different type of proportion than She-Ra had. She-Ra mm -hmm. was much skinnier, more like, um, model kind of, you know, mm -hmm. proportions, or I guess, you know, I guess I don't know, Gal Gadot was something that was thrown out there as a mm -hmm. comparison, um, in terms of physique, but, yeah. uh, you know, this is, uh, we, we tried to do something a little different. So it's all new tooling. It's not using any parts from Shira, right? So it's a brand new, brand new tooling, brand new figure. Um, and, and yeah, it, 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 it was pretty hard to get, to get to it, but I'm stoked with how, how it ended up. We went back and forth a lot, a lot. Like, check this out. Compare this one to this one. What do you think? It was like a, an eye test at the optometrist. Like, left, right, <laughs> left, right. But, yeah, this this Tila goes to CrossFit, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, thick thighs save lives, as Gaty's Toy says here. Yeah. But uh, there, there is that. Um, I, I think something you did really capture with her is this she's feminine and and beautiful but also like is is uh, uh mus like muscly and she's, yeah she's a she's a master of the universe like she, yeah yeah she can it, kick her ass and she's a lady like she needed, is yeah i definitely want to like empower her with like just you know she is a warrior right like she mm -hmm. fights with alongside he-man right and man yep. and arms and all of this so making her like really skinny or whatever just didn't feel right right so we we definitely you know gave her muscle definition but mm -hmm. still try to keep the the femininity there just because you know back to the roots of the filmation show and and the mini comics and all of that right it walked that fine line of of badass warrior and also like awesome like you know beautiful you know at the same time Yep, yep. Uh, Ted Biaselli knows a thing or two about focusing stories on <laughs> Tila. Uh, oh, now everyone likes. <laughs> <Tila>. <laughs> uh, nah, you know, Teddy. Teddy I, listen, uh, Teddy. Teddy was, was up. He knew. He knew. He had. He had the yeah, plan. He exactly. Had, yeah. He was ahead of he the knew, game, and he was like, "All of you need to chill out." Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of taking a deep breath and and waiting for things to pan out, right? Mm -hmm. Right. For mm -hmm. real. You know because how uh, amazing is she in in season two? She's incredible. Uh, I mean, I mean, she was great in season one, but I, was, I think she was great in season one also. Yeah. But in season two, it was like she got the the you know the the goddess powers and all yeah. that. It was just such a you know such a great. Yeah. I only wish some of my other favorite properties got the treatment uh, that 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 Motu got with that show because it just yeah. felt like everybody got served this you know like everybody Absolutely. got a great loop like you can actually say if they just ended it right there if Motu ended right there you have a full no story. no we need one more season don't, don't I'll, I'll take more i'm just saying oh, like yeah, even if it just ended i'll sure. take it going in perpetuity ted keep it coming yep but uh i want to shout out the 2000x head too because yes that is you know that's probably my favorite Tila, you know, from my memory is is how she was in that show, design wise, and I love that her, her that long uh, ponytail and the bangs because it just gave a sense of motion and dynamism to, to her character. Remind there was a a PS3 video game and I can't remember the name of the game, but there was like a red headed uh, uh, feet femme fatale ass mm -hmm. kicker, and it she had like that big red flowing whenever she would beat people up, they're like that that hair would spin around so this just captures that so well and yeah, I, I, just, I always loved her look in in the 2000 yeah. show and in, yeah. in the comics and all of that so including it and in the past and other figures we you know we inspire we, we draw a lot from 2000x in terms of our design heavenly and, sword yeah um emiliano santa lucia who does 99 percent of our of our motu concept art right um he he draws heavily from 2000x as an inspiration right so mm -hmm. we just felt um, you know, as I was talking to him, I'm like, what can we do to, to, to update your sketch that you, you know, your concept part that you did like five years ago, like, what can we do? And, and, and then I was like, oh, let's do 2000 X, right? Like 2000 X is like such a, it'll give us a, a unique, different head, different feel for the whole thing. And yeah, like you're saying, Peter, like the hair is completely different. So cool. And, and so, yeah, I'm really stoked that we were, we were able to, to throw this one in there. Yeah, you know, it's cool. It Go feels ahead. like a John Romita senior, like Mary Jane drawing in this picture too. Is like that, yeah, like, for sure. You know, it's really cool that the way that they treated the eyes. Mark Bristow, our painter, you know, absolutely nailed the paint on that. 
Well, in what I, I, I what I like about it is it's 2000 X, but it still fits incredibly well with the rest of the sculpt. Like it doesn't. Sometimes it, it, it's just by costume design or whatever you can have this alternate head, but it's like eh, it kind of looks out of place or whatever. But like right. this looks like it's still perfectly part. Yeah, of and I think thing. that's you know that's kind of been our like um, you know little secret sauce really is just being able to nail these different looks from different inspirations of mm -hmm. the lore and still have it fit within the context of what we've redesigned as a figure. I think even with like Battle Cat when we did the Cringer head. Right, like mm, yeah, well, fits in even though it's super cartoony looking yeah. compared to the other heads, right? Um, but it's that adding of the texture, it's the deco, it's the the sculpt still feeling like it's in the same world that yeah. it, it, it it somehow works together. And yeah, thank you, thank you for pointing that out because it is something that we consciously try to do. <laughs> <laughs> hours and hours, days yeah. and weeks spent. Uh, I do want to press in this uh, Teddy uh, comment here. I demand a one six variance, boys. Uh, for oh yeah. Just in hell, like I would a uh, Ka version of Tila, the the snake goddess version of Tila. Oh goddess, um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. sexy. And then and then the final version, like the uh, Eternia Tower. Oh, right. Version, oh man, looks so freaking cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I you know, uh, people who've been following us, who you've been, you know, uh, buying our figures for the last several years, they they know that uh, we we're not shy when it comes to variants, right? <laughs> uh, Especially we, variants that, that are like a full other character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but when I look at Motu and I try to do and we you know try to do the variants here, like we don't, I don't try to shortchange it too much, right? Because for example. Panthor is basically a variant of Battle Cat, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it originally always was. But yeah. when we did ours, you know, I made sure we included four different totally, you know, style, style heads, right? So that yeah. it it felt like its own thing. We did the film, the, the classic um, trap jaw, right? Um, it came with a new head and a throwback arm cannon, yes. right? To the to the cartoon. So um, I think if we were to tackle something like goddess you can expect there to be different heads and different different armor and, and so forth so hmm. um we have a toy maker royalty also joining in the chat with kyle from super seven. Oh, what up, oh, kyle? What up kyle the um, kyle kyle just sent me a beautiful crusty the clown from that simpsons line and boy whew. oh boy that's one of my favorite figures of all time right yeah, now kyle also gave me that's one of the best mecha godzillas ever made Right next to yours, Peter, actually. But, <laughs> good best. save, good save. But, but, I mean, come on. Look at that. Yeah, it's great. Dang, it does look really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yours is pretty cool, too. Yeah, come, uh, on, come, <laughs> on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yours, yours is yours is good too. My mine is a weapon. You can hold that by the tail, and you can take you know home invaders out depending on what state <laughs> you live in. <laughs> Florida, you can. Um. Well. Uh. Let's. Okay. Any. Any. Final thought, I guess, uh, any, any things you want to call out or let people know about uh, as this thing's up for order? Well, I just feel like Tila's one of those, you know, top tier characters in Motu, you know, and I, and we know from the numbers that there are quite a few people who seem to be completionists on this line. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any hesitancy, I would just say, don't sleep on Tila, bro, because that's, uh, that's going to hurt later if you don't have Tila. You know, it's like, we, we try to keep a version of He-Man in the shop all the time, you know, in case someone starts the collection late, yeah. you can still get He-Man. Same thing with Skeletor. But, t you know, Tila's one of those important A1 characters. I don't think you're ever going to see a better Tila, period, hands down. I know I'm biased, but come on. Uh, I agree. I mean, I, I think this is probably one of the best Tila's out there. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, she we're, we're finally starting to round out that original what was it the original uh eight right so yeah. um, we're we're almost there at this point right tila was one of those final big big characters that uh that kind of rounds out the that original uh first uh crop of figures that came out yeah. yeah and you know shout out as always we mentioned emiliano he's he's an absolute cornerstone of this oh, line yeah. if you're a motu fan and you don't know emiliano beyond our uh, uh work with him go look it up it's awesome oh, yeah well, and then shout out mark bristow who literally 
the paint on this thing at decon you saw it like he brought them in we, we we brought in the the prototype right as the show was opening like the last second you know mark is so clutch and working with us and of course tommy hodges uh mm -hmm. sculpting this thing you know it's just an incredible uh lineup of people that we have working with us yeah tommy and, tommy, tommy just you know he he poured his heart and soul into this one yeah he really, a lot of work really yeah it was a lot of work to get this one done and 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 you know it, it's it's a testament to his his skill um and also shout out to alex brewer on our team you all know him right um he, he, he's, he's the magic he's, man is what i call him exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and and yeah, again, Mark him sing Mark's praises enough. Uh, he, yeah. he he if all of you don't know, he he painted this. He painted Orco. He painted pa uh, Panthor, Battle Cat, Skeletor. So uh, you know Trap Jaw. So he he he's he's been painting our Mojo figures for quite a bit at this point. Yeah. So pre-orders close Friday, right, Hector? Yeah, Friday Friday morning. I, yeah, I it says it's, uh, it says uh, eleven fifty nine a.m. Central Time. I, I, you know, I can't do the calculation oh of everybody's times, but you can figure it out. Central eleven. I mean, don't wait for the last minute. You don't wait for the last minute. One. Yeah, so it's uh, it's like yeah, twelve fifty nine for you guys, I think, and then yeah, okay. nine fifty nine for Pacific. State. So that's like just after lunch for East East uh, Easter. Now, uh, and the other thing is tomorrow. If you if you want a little extra Tila talk, right? Tomorrow, Ooh, Hector and I will be doing our Mondo Toy Talk on the Mondo YouTube channel. Where, Ooh. believe it or not, there is still more to talk about when it comes to Tila. We got some behind the scenes shots to show some of the sculpt and progress, the concept art, all that kind of stuff. And uh, in case we don't get to see you guys uh, before then, I will be heading up to Chicago for C two E two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, we may have some big news at C two E two. Oh, big news, huh? Maybe have some big news. It, it might be uh, it might behoove people to come and find out what we're doing at C two E two because it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a newsworthy day, I think. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I can um, I can say that there's gonna be some 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 announcements, maybe, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. something. So J Jay, just get the streams ready. Oh, okay. Get that? the get the streams warmed up. Yeah, you might have to stream on a Saturday. I'm just Ugh. saying. I know. Um, or just get the thumbnail ready. I'll, I'll get a thumbnail ready. <laughs> and a notify me button. Mondo, Mondo news. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it's like, what you know. What I'll do is I'll I'll uh, I'll get I'll, I'll mail you a cell phone and and then we'll have to stream from the floor and that's we'll it. stream in. To this stream, don't cross um, the streams. Oh, yeah, exactly. Comments. Yeah, don't cross. Exactly. The those, right. those are great comments. Hundred <laughs> um, percent. So yeah, it'll be a fun one. Um, again, a lot, a lot more to talk about. will be uh, on um, the Mondo channel uh, tomorrow. So if you're not, uh, if you haven't been, come join us there, and uh, we'll have some giveaways, and we'll talk about uh, some other news that we haven't shared yet, and it'll be a fun hang. Thank you for having <laughs> us, though. Yeah, we'll need to we'll need to get a uh, uh, what uh, face. Uh, <laughs> I, I I I jump on my friend's streams once in a while. He does like a, a UFO uh, show, uh, Christian yeah. Harloff, and uh, and uh, so he's like, "Hey, can you send me a picture for the thumbnail?" I'm like, "What what do I do?" He's like, "I don't know. Like like we're we're curious. We're like we're skeptical of this news. So do something or like there's something in the air. Point at it." So I'm like, "All right." So I did this one time, and dude, I got so roasted for that. People are like, "I don't watch." Any YouTube videos with white dudes pointing in the thumbnails? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm so self conscious about that now because oh, a few man. doors. Here's, into the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People like to to crap on those things, but works. let me tell you, I I look at the click through rates on my videos. If I'm doing a, I know, that gets like 10 percent more clicks than People if it's just it. me going. I know. Or whatever. Right? Like if. You have to do a stupid face. People click those damn thumbnails. You got to see the real rejects ones. Those guys are bawling their eyes out on the thumbnails. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. I can't do that. Um, or now they just like, it's all uh, rendered and stuff like that. It's not even real. The, the yeah, reactions yeah. are putting it's my on avatar. the pictures. My AI avatar. Uh, anyways, uh, gentlemen, uh, it's always fun uh, hanging out with you. Uh, I believe we got. A guest from Spiro Toys coming on in oh, a man. second. So, oh, awesome. oh, um, 
Uh, but uh, uh, congratulations on a fantastic Tila. Thank you for your level-headed uh, thoughts on on oh. the turtles uh, figures. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I know it's probably weird coming in and talking about. It. I, I really appreciate having toy makers to talk about it because sometimes us toy buyers, that's the only perspective we have, and it's good to have your the other side of it. Uh, definitely good to put going. opinions out there and w people listen. So it's definitely good to voice. In opinions concerns yeah. but just keep the perspective that no one's trying to screw anybody and everybody's trying to impress you like honestly that's the weirdest part about all this you don't go into this business and get unless you really love it because it's freaking hard yeah and you're you you identify so much like you like you care what people think about it so we read the comments we're like Fuck people are pissed off about this or like oh thank god they loved that thing that we wanted them to love you know so it's it, yeah. it, it, we might not get it right every time, but the intention is always to impress and to make everybody happy. And as you said, Jay, we're stewards of of the of the property, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and before you leave, I have one super chat I almost missed from Alpha okay. Magnus. Two dollars super chat. Mondo should do Mo Two Giants to fit with Origins. One six scale Grace Call. Oh God. Bigger than that? No. Exactly. Well, watch what you wish for, bro. No, <laughs> that's too much. We'll do a one six attorney, and then I don't want to hear anybody <laughs> complaining. I don't yeah, want to hear it. We're gonna one six harder. And it's gonna harder until you have no money or something. It comes with a now. ring doorbell because you'll have to move yeah. into it. The size of a shed, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can it's store like, all your other toys in it. Yeah, it's play it's school. Like you can yeah. get it for like your kids, like in the backyard. <laughs> We'll be riding down the slide thing. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. It's for the pool. All the way down. Exactly. It's so worth it. Oh, my God. Stephen Shank says he wants everything on Hexer's shelves. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's again. So, Fubi, look how good it looks on shelves, you guys. I'm tell you guys. And the color, like just the mm -hmm. variety mm -hmm. and how it pops. But, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah. Definitely check out Mondo. Uh, is it Mondo Toy Talk or is Mondo Toys on YouTube? Mondo Toy Talk. Oh, the, the, the channel? Yeah. Is it Mondo Toys? What is the channel? Now you have me. I'll, I'll tell you right now. Oh, is it Mondo Shop? Shop? There's other Mondos that are. Not I know. There's one Mondo that's definitely not us, and apparently he's super famous. He's like a a hairdresser. Yeah. Oh. My wife's friends were telling me like, oh yeah, that's like Greg Mondo or something. I'm like, who? Well, the problem is Mondo is like I think isn't it a German word or something? It's like a generic word in a different language. I'll tell you right now. We're at Mondo Shop on YouTube. There it is. Yeah, Mondo Shop. Wow, he's not even subscribed. I am on wow. it. I am on my personal one. I am on my personal one. Here, I'll do this one too. Here the we go. The truth comes out, Jay. Subscribe. Oh, I'm on my person. Oh. This is my geek dad life. When they say it's never meet your heroes. Have an aneurysm over here. Wow. 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 Brad Mondo. Well, yeah, there it is. You all, please, uh, tomorrow, Mondo, uh, Mondo Shop on YouTube. We're going to be doing the Tila Toy Talk and uh, talking about some other stuff as well. Yeah. Boom. And giveaways. So stop and we're almost at five thousand subscribers. I know, Kyle. Ridiculous. He got caught, dude. Red-handed. All You're right. right. That's true. I'll uh, see you guys there. <laughs> uh, Thanks, take care, Rob. gentlemen. Thank uh, you so much. Thanks, dude. Have a good one. Later, bud. Um a uh, big thanks uh, to the Mondo crew for coming and hanging out uh with us tonight, talking about turtles, talking about uh tila turtles and tila but now it's time to talk a little bit about animal warriors of the kingdom let's have a warm welcome for jason adam and brick something welcome <laughs> gentlemen hey what's going on hello hello um, i hey, swear jason. i have cool toys too, just upstairs well here's <laughs> wait i'll say this jason last time you, you, I was talking about Hector, like he needed to step up his backlighting game uh, for his streams. And uh, I can see we've we've got ourselves yeah. like a <laughs> kaleidoscopic uh, rainbow. Uh, it looks amazing. I, I, big, big. Hang big off side, yeah. Everyday really raving good. for Jason. I go big. What <laughs> you see the glow sticks. <laughs> oh, look, she's got it. You can, okay, I see you. <laughs> Um, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we're a couple, a week and a half left. Oh, so. thanks for having us. Nine um, days. Nine. I don't know. Days. Nine Ooh. days. Uh, let's let's take a chat. So you know glad what? we didn't end at the on the eclipse. Uh, <laughs> are, are you all like who's? I think we get like a ninety percent eclipse tomorrow in in Raleigh. What were you all getting for for an eclipse? What percent? Um, I'm in Louisiana, we're not in the, and it looks yeah, like we're, we're going to get path. almost totality. 
I'll oh, be, I'll be happy. Uh, yeah, I'm like, we're like really close. Um, and apparently it's supposed to last for four minutes. So I got some special glasses for yep. my daughter and myself. And good. Uh, yeah, I almost wanted to like check her out of school just to make sure she actually got to watch it. But we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, we uh, we got our special glasses. I think I saw glasses from the last time it happened. But um, but uh, I, I, it's, oh, nice. it'll be kind of it won't be a full one. I think we'll probably only see. You'll see like a crescent bit of the sun behind it. We'll get the because basically when you have the total, you can take the glasses off yeah. and just look at it, and it's really cool. You get like the like the ring around the the moon or whatever. But um, really, and I'm okay. on spring break, so see, I'm paranoid I about it. Don't give up. A... Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Jason, if you are in totality, yeah, there's a moment that moment when it's covered, you can take off the glass because it's all dark. Um, and it's like it's incredible. Oh, okay, I understand. all right. Um, but again, just make sure, yeah, it's, it's something the totality, about it very surreal. <laughs> especially you, Jason. I'm gonna you keep just, the glasses. You know, yeah, yeah, he I'm, did I'm gonna be real. your eyes, man. I just got my eyes fixed, I don't want to risk yeah. it. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch a Rocco or something. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so, gentlemen, let's take a quick look at the Brian Brink charts. Yes. Of the charts. Ooh. Thank you, Brian. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this, I mean, there's so much detail here. I'll put the link in in the chat as well so you can play along at home. Um, but uh, you all had a big jump uh, a little while back where you were kind of pacing below uh, your first wave of figures. And you had a big jump. Um, and now you're pacing uh, above uh, your first Kickstarter uh, program for AWOC. And we're above the Assassin alternate head um, at over 230,000. Mm -hmm. um, but with nine or have, we have five days left, four or five, nine days nine. left. Next Wednesday. Nine Next days. Wednesday. There's still a bit of work to do to get to the Raving figure, Marrow figure, Scathing, Avion, Brutox, mm -hmm. and Mamba, the Elephant, which I think we all really, really want. Um, so a right. bit of a ways to go, but if anybody knows a Brian Brink chart or a crowdfund, uh, usually get a lot of people uh, and get that last day, last week or yeah, so. Yeah, that last spike. 48 hours is going to be wild. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. But I guess, you know what? Um, last time you all were on here, uh, I don't think we had any of the, the higher level uh, tiers uh, revealed, which which have been revealed now with um some of these these additional bucks these avion bucks these yeah. um elefante bucks Boom. um but uh like what what, what do you all want to talk about here what, what are we trying to real let quick people why know? You, sorry i know you started scrolling but go all the way to the top that wasn't there before either because yeah. as you say right there yeah as you say, like uh, before the Kickstarter, uh, I think last time they were here was the very beginning. And so it ended at, I think, a shadow version of raving, like teased. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah, yep. it was a silhouette. And, and yeah. the whole thing was like, hey, we're going to unlock four new bucks. And then there was like a big deal, like, oh, no, actually, there's a bird. So there. <laughs> and then now it's like, just kidding. It's seven. We're going for seven. <laughs> That's the goal here. So year two of these figures being in people's hands, they're just like, you know what? Let's just go for broke. And so all of those, what you see there is potentially uh, the different types of bucks that, that will get unlocked. Those aren't all the figures. Those are just the different body just types. The bucks. And just right. gives people a sense of the um, scale. Yeah, um, year one, two bucks. Year two, uh, let's do seven more. That let's seems- do four, let's go crazy. Let's escalate this a little bit Prince. here. Let's go crazy. Um, uh, Prince is the greatest of all time. Yeah, uh, do we Recipe. best Super Bowl performance in my opinion? Agreed, uh, hands down, easily. Well, Michael Jackson's is pretty good, but so I do think Prince yeah. is number one. And if you count I think, Whitney I, Houston's give... national anthem, I think that also could be great. Yeah. Super Bowl performance, but anyways, so, go ahead. I, I... I give Prince the edge over Michael Jackson only because there was like that downpour towards the end, like mm -hmm. right when like, yes. you know, like when he was playing Purple exactly. Rain. But yeah, it's, yep. it's so hard to like, like pick between the two. And like, you know, Michael Jackson like really brought what we know as the halftime show to life. So it's mm -hmm. like everyone else has to live up to that standard. So 
Yeah. True. All right. True, but... of those amazing men. Um, and Jay's a guitarist, so you can. Would oh, you cool. want to play out in that rain with no, your guitar? Not at all. Exactly. Absolutely not. Because you would die. No way. Well, but it's yeah, it's the electricity, it. but also yep. just the functionality yep. of playing. Yep. You, right. Your hand. Yeah. If, it, if anybody's played guitar, and like say like I don't know, taking a shower and then went to go play guitar after your hands are like wet, you can't. You can't yeah, play it. nearly as well, yeah. and he still freaking killed it. So uh, there you go. Up, I think man. we just answered that yeah. definitively, objectively. And he was Moving in on. heels, like yep. high heels, and just right? like running all over the place I mean, with on. a slippery floor. Yeah. Like it was, it was, like, it was yep. unreal. Yep. Um, all right, let's let's talk about. I don't know. Should we should we go straight to the damn elephant? Like I feel like that's the one that <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people say. Like we need to unlock this. If yeah. we unlock this, we'll I'll buy everything. Um, we- but uh, uh, Mamba, right. yeah. Like, what's uh, like, what, this is this is bold. This is bold to say we're gonna make a gigantic uh, uh, elephant figure. Yeah. Uh, Jason, what what madness uh, struck you to to shoot for this? <laughs> Perfect word too. <laughs> um. So. Uh, we we're gonna release we're gonna reveal some other stretch goals. We actually moved this figure forward in the stretch goal breakdown because, you know, in in the creative team we were all just like this is such a like amazing showpiece. Uh, mm-hmm. We thought that moving it forward would really just get all the excitement, uh, you know, mm-hmm. around that kind of a showpiece figure. So we we made the decision to kind of move it forward a couple and then. Uh, We've got two more figures to show after that. Um, and everything's broken down into waves. So, you know, this would be part of wave three. Um, and what's cool about wave three is there's going to actually be a mix of body types. Um, yeah. Like the biggest mix of body types, I should say. There'll be uh, – there's the the bird, the uh, brawler, the, the elephant, and then, you know, potentially what we're going to show later on, you know, in a few minutes on the show. Um but yeah, we, we really wanted to expand the port parts portfolio. So, uh, you know, it, as we look through the Kickstarter, if people haven't seen it, we've got a Fox character. Uh, so having that body, we'll be able to do stuff like raccoons in the future, coyotes, mm-hmm. uh, regular, maybe like a, a chihuahua or something like that. And then for the, for the big brawler bucks, you know, all the big dogs that you kind of associate with being, uh, you know, a bigger breed, you know, like Rottweiler, mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but, you know, stuff like that. So it, doing this Kickstarter really just expands our parts library so much. Uh, and instead of like introducing a new buck every like maybe three or four waves, we've got all these new uh, parts right out the gate. And so we'll have like essentially years of new parts that we can uh, mix and match. And, you know, we'll probably be doing like secondaries, like armor and heads and stuff like that to keep everything fresh. But, um, you know, just the, the, part library that we've unlocked so far really is going to yeah. bring the, the line so much more to life. We'll be able to represent all the characters that are in the comic going forward. And, uh, you know, our issue one was in comic shops on March 6th and that sold out. Uh, so we're super excited about everyone kind of really discovering the brand now, like, uh, like Brick mentioned, we've been out for a little over a year. So, uh, we wanted to kind of try to get sophomore hump and really just knock out, knock it out of the park with all these different characters and, and parts and body types. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's really cool. Um, and again, I think, you know, I, I've, I've seen these comments hit even just this channel uh, when we've had you on, but it's just like, Oh, aren't you already like an established toy company? Why do you use Kickstarter? Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, th- you are trying to add, Five thousand new bucks to the thing, and, right. and it's not like yeah. you're just doing this yeah, for the so, same bucks again. You're 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 yeah. opening up like this is taking right. it from from a hundred percent to ten thousand percent, and yeah. and and so it right, logically exactly. does it, make sense you know, to use this see, platform. Anytime, yeah. Yeah, I think once people look at the campaign, they understand it. I, I do apologize; my internet's farting out, of course. Uh, but you know, like Hasbro and Mattel will do those, uh, has lab and everything. Anytime they're doing something really ambitious. Uh, and, and I think that this is definitely on the same level as far as like ambitious and scope of the project. So, uh, it just yep. makes good sense. And, 
you know, it's allowed us to do all these different podcasts and get the word out about the brand because it's not just a toy line. We are building a brand. It's the, the toys, mm-hmm. the comics, hopefully mm-hmm. a cartoon in the future. Um, and we kind of, we kind of, you know, we look up to the four horsemen, what they've done with mythic legions and, uh, the, the community that they've built. And obviously their figures are amazing. Um, mm-hmm. so you, we're, we're kind of like looking at them as, as mentors and, and wanting to build that fan base. That's so, uh, passionate and excited about the, you know, about their, their brand. So we'd like to emulate that. It's, yeah. it, I should, right it, it, it's, it's interesting because I, I feel like a lot of people, um, sort of get the idea that we're, that, that, that we are a bigger company than we are. <laughs> but the truth is like the company is effectively Jason. And then on the payroll is like me and Derek and Sequoia, um, Brick's just, hey, Brick's sort of doing what I was doing, you know, six months ago where he's just sort of doing this because he loves the line. And um, I want an Epic All In, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you if you go Epic in. All In, do you get added to like the periphery of... Uh, no, we'll, we'll, ex- <laughs> we'll explain that comment later. Sorry, Adam, go, go ahead. <laughs> But it's like, it's, it's very flattering because people think that we're, we're this big, you know, mega corporation a la Hasbro or something like that. And it's just not, it's just not accurate. You know, the, the, the funding isn't that even if we wanted to say like, Hey, we're going to make all these figures, um, and, and then just open them up for pre-order. We couldn't, that's not how it works. I mean, this, the, the cost associated with, with what Jason wants to do with this kickstarter is is i will tell you it's it's like more than what the dollar well, amount we're asking for is like uh tooling for this mamba figure has to be pushing six figures if it isn't already six figures right i would think because isn't like a standard six yeah, inch figure it's gonna like be, 30 40 thousand dollars like yeah it's about way that. Off on yeah that. it's gonna be it's gonna be an He's expensive like, oh, crap, figure is it? <laughs> um it's the kind of thing yeah, it's it's the kind of thing where like you know we can only offer so many variants of that figure, um, so we want to like really get our bang for our, our buck, uh, and we know it's going to be a really uh, fun, impressive figure. Um, it, it it'll be similar to all the AWOC figures where like you don't have to worry about the kids playing with it. You know, obviously the weapons are mm-hmm. a bit sharp, but like the figure itself is very durable. You're not gonna have to worry about. You know, the, the kiddos damaging your mom if they want to pull it. Oh, look, there he is. You might have to worry about Mamba damaging your children, though, because uh, yes. he's he's, he's going to be pretty big. <laughs> he, he has right. that um uh, those old LJN wrestler ability, to just like <laughs> chuck it at somebody and like uh, <laughs> do some yeah. damage. You gotta have yes. some strong kids to chuck it. But yeah. You know what's funny? <laughs> like when Adam mentioned the kids thing, like. Who, which one, like, raise your hand if your kids, like, I just, I automatically thought about this, like, when they were, like, toddlers, when they were, like, just old enough, and they, like, pulled the cereal on themselves, like, have, have y'all had experience <laughs> yeah. that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the, like, it's one of the, like, the few joys of, like, of, like, a mess being created where you're just, like, oh, we just learned something, didn't we? <laughs> and the sad part is I have a nine-year-old that didn't learn and still does that crap, and that's, it's not as fun then, I will say. Uh, like, come on it's not cute anymore stop <laughs> if i would to go back to the question about like why why kickstarter why kickstarter and i know a lot of people are like hey what's with these companies doing crowdfunding they've they're already established and they say the same thing for hazab i gotta say one you've already said that we're trying to unlock a bunch of new uh tools here and a bunch of new pieces to be able to like create a full-on universe a full-on world of animal warriors but beyond that, I got to say, like, um, this is truly the way that I think crowdfunding was intended. We're looking Absolutely. for people who are essentially down and believe in this product or think it it should exist and want it to, like, flourish to basically back it, to invest in it, to help us get to, and I, I know I'm using that word us, but to help it get to the place where it's like, yeah, we can actually be wild and do this many bucks mm-hmm. now so that by this time hopefully like what 2026 20, or so we've got a bunch of different characters coming through and have a sense of what's coming in the future because those would also be have been announced and etc so it's like 
think of it that way. And I know folks have been asking like, oh, are you doing this character? Are you doing this character? Or, you know, when is that happening? I'm just going to say it again. Like that can all happen if folks want to throw down to help support this and get us to that sort of next stage. And that's kind of the weird, funny part we're in right now in this campaign, because we know there, there's usually like a, a, a swoop that goes up. Thank you, Brian, for, for giving us that data. <laughs> but like, we really, we want to push all the way to the end. So when I was joking yeah. and said, part of the reason I'm helping is to make that epic all in epic because concretely, there's this package in this thing called the epic all in. And what that gets you is everything that was originally offered as well as a bunch of the new unlock things. So every time you're looking at Meryl right there, the bird where it says unlocks, you'll notice as you're scrolling through a bunch of these things say unlocked on day whatever, and some of them say unlocks at this dollar amount. Every single thing that gets unlocked, if you back with an Epic All In, you get thrown in to your package. So it's uh, 650 bucks. I know what, 650 bucks, that's crazy. Times are tough, but it's the equivalent of over that, like a thousand something dollars worth of stuff if we actually unlock everything. So that's why we're like so you're here. actually making money the more things well, get unlocked. So this is the crossover with Flipboard, right? So it's like, hey, Flipboards, you, you, and I, I wasn't <laughs> comfortable saying this before, but Jason said it. Um, yo, go in on the Epic All In, help us unlock all of the tiers. Thank you, Austin, 1074 for my beautiful little Google Sheets thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, help us log in, get a, get a bunch of figures, get together with friends, and maybe they'll want to do an Epic All In together. And um, you know, you're going to be able to walk away with a couple hundred dollars worth of free animal, well, you know, extra Animal Warriors of the Kingdom figures. So that's kind of like why we want to make this push. We want that swoop to go fast. That's why I wanted to help, because if I don't help, then... <laughs> My epic all You're in losing might, money might on be less deal. epic. Come on. Want that Mamba, so, baby. Not exactly <laughs> on payroll, Mamba. but um, <laughs> Everyone's uh, pumped for the Mamba, rightfully so. But I got to say, this Meryl, this Cardinal, uh, with his little uh, mandolin or loot, uh, bow and arrow, uh, as someone who plays a stringed instrument, I think this is my guy. I think this is my dude right here. <laughs> he's my, he's fun, he's right? Yeah. And he, he will have wings. All the bird characters are going to have wings. That uh, they're removable. Well, we're intending for them to be removable. We'll see what happens. Um, but the the yeah, intent that. is for them to be removable. That's why they've got uh, the arm guard variant on him. Yeah. So if you'll notice the call outs, that you probably already saw this, Jay. But the that's the the loot is what uh, we're, we we decided. I guess is the instrument it's supposed to be, but it splits in half and turns into a freaking bow. That's not a separate piece. That's some, that's that's some 80s and 90s piece. stuff right there. I love exactly. that. Exactly. So I said right? that was my um, Silverhawk you know, guitar that turned into a, yeah. a bird. Yeah. So um, there's a couple stuff. things that we added on this Kickstarter. We, first of all, we decided to go pinless. Uh, we could have done mm. it with the first Kickstarter or the first, you know, wave one or series one. Um, and, and Thane's actually pinless. I decided not to do pins on the smaller, on the standard buck because we can get, we could get way more use of it, uh, out of it in mm -hmm. that, in that, you know, being pinned with pins. Uh, but we made the choice to go ahead and do pinless this time. Uh, and uh, most of the figures are going to have calf articulation. We've got two figures that have elements on the head that have 360 yeah. movements. So the, uh, the chameleon Gresh has the 360 yep. eyes. And then uh, the that? rabbit uh, kanji has the 360 ears. And yep. all of the uh, reptiles are going to have opening and closing jaws. So uh, I, I feel like we really kind of stepped it up as far as like the articulation goes. Um, and, you know, our goal was to make it very difficult to pick just one or two of these characters. I feel like we, we kind of put out all bangers. But, you know, I'm, obviously I'm a little biased. Uh, and the idea is, you know, once these are all out, you're going to have a really big uh, AWOC collection. You'll probably have your own shelf for that. But, uh, you know, as they arrive in waves, in the meantime, you'll be able to, uh, you know, incorporate them with your Masterverse stuff, your uh, TMNT, Thundercats, uh, Motu, stuff like that. 
Um, it was a great chat here. I got to bust it in from Stephen uh, Shanks. If I, I pledge an, that too. <laughs> if I pledge an additional $5, can you include a note that says, congratulations, you won this amazing all-in from your friends at Spiro Toys. It would really help my marriage. Yeah, I responded and said that yeah. should absolutely be standard for all of these things. <laughs> for your attorney, yeah, for and, your cat slayer, we, they should just do that and give us coverage. And, oh, and if she um, gives you any pushback, just say, I, I thought you wanted me to be happy. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, Daniel K in the chat. Uh, Kyle is talking in the chat. And speaking of, uh, I don't know, new toys that we're supposed to get at some point. Kyle here to talk 2003 TMNT. Yeah, Kyle here to talk 2003 TMNT. Uh, and then what package gets the mom? I think you answer this in the chat, Brick something. Uh, but uh, I believe it's you can add it to any of them, and it sh and, and it, will, it will hit the right. all in package then as well. It will so be included in the included. epic all in. Epic all in. Epic yeah, all -in. but it'll be its yeah. own. You can. It'll be its own reward too. If you want to just, if once it gets unlocked, if you just want Mamba. You can do that as well. But uh, as far as like the epic all in, what's so nice about it is, you know, you get everything that's unlocked. And uh, so it'll just be part of your reward. You don't have to uh, worry about adding it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But just keep in mind, like the, that those won't unlock. So I, I, I legitimately understand people are like, well, I want to back it and I want Mamba, but it's not unlocked and it's not a choice right now. So what do I do? And so what you can actually do is because you can kind of like say uh, you can give a dollar or whatever. There's that first sort of tier where you can just put in a dollar amount. If you really wanted to, um, uh, Mamba is going to be an $89 uh, price for the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, So you could put in $89 to help us get towards that unlock goal. And then when it gets unlocked in the backer kit, as people are talking about, that's when you'll actually choose what your rewards are. And you can switch it to Mamba then. Nice. So. So help. My, <laughs> my all in needs to be epic. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, but on that tip, um, uh, I, again, because I know you're, you're we're all limited on time, but if you scroll down, I think now would be a good time to check out Mamba real quick. If you scroll down towards the end. Yeah, look at all going. those figures. Look going. at all those animals. Oh, this, this is what I'm talking about. This is unprecedented. Oh, oh, wait, you passed Mamba. What, what are those, Jay? What? What? Scroll, scroll down. Whoa. Oh, I wait saw a second. A peek or something we got Whoa. going on here. Oh, wait look at that. Second. Hey, wait there's... a second. Yeah. So, um, I, I but wait. There's that. more. I retract that. <laughs> we don't want to uh, not sleep till Mamba. It looks like we need to stay up a little longer because we need to push past Mamba at the four hundred ten thousand level, get to a four forty to unlock this guy, Zwar. Um, the rhino, a member of the Pachydine, uh faction or house. And then if you scroll down one more, it looks like there's something else. Oh, yeah. Let's keep going here. Yeah, keep going. Whoa. Hippo. Hip hop well, synonymous. Hip hop mm. open and close. Whoa, Hip -hop and really? You give them all the easy ones. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that and especially out of hippo's mouth, I watching like they, they went at a zoo, they'll feed hippos like watermelons and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite things yes. to watch, so I don't know why. So, like, know, right? getting a hippo with an articulated it's mouth amazing. is exciting. Does he have the, well? Sorry, there's another viral thing going around of hippos, and I've seen this before at the San Francisco Zoo where like they're spraying stuff oh. out their other end. Oh, yeah, does that, that's is that what an action I was, feature that's on this what too? I was <laughs> God. It's going to affect my backing. So you got to tell me right now. <laughs> Can I squeeze the legs? No. And... Uh, no? No, I don't. Maybe not. Uh, suspect. Uh, oh, but no, no this that's incredible. That. I, I love, again, it's just, this, you all have really thrown in everything and the kitchen sink in into this, into mm -hmm. what this epic, I mean, truly epic you know, all in, in terms of what you can get. We, we looked at the, y'all were off the new, um, uh, Ninja Turtles at the beginning of the podcast, and I was, uh, you know, I, I know it's obviously ambitious, but we're trying to make something on on par with Ninja Turtles, and I realize that's you know, really ballsy and and, and wild, uh, but I just feel like, uh, not just the toy community, but, you know, 
people that watch movies and read, you know, enjoy music and books and everything are just so hungry for something that's just fresh and new. Yeah. Uh, and there's something so refreshing about discovering like a new IP or a new band that you can just kind of like dive in and there's there's no real pressure to like, you know, go back and collect or rebuy four albums yeah. or who, who, who knows how many comics, you know, this is something that's <laughs> relatively, relatively new. Yep. Uh, it's something that you can collect with your friends or with your kids. You know, you can kind of share this hobby, introduce this hobby to your kids, with something mm -hmm. that's brand new for both of you all so that you're like both equally excited and, and you know, seeing it with fresh eyes. Uh, and I mean, to us, it's just so important, like for culture in general, to keep creating new stuff and trying new stuff. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you know, if, if we stagnate, the, the culture kind of dies. So. We're doing our part in, in making really fun toys and comics. And uh, what's so fun about this, in my opinion, is, you know, as the comics are, are coming out, people will be able to see all the little Easter eggs that we've been hiding in in the panels to kind of give people a hint on what is going to, you know, what toys we are planning. Yeah. And and that's... That, you um, know, I saw that comment. We're actually ending two days after your tax return. So, you know, you work so hard all year. You got to kind of treat yourself. I mean, what are we working so hard for if we're not going to enjoy action figures treat. and relax with our toys a little bit, you know? Yeah. Treat you heard it stuff. here. The U.S. government wants you to do epic. Um, <laughs> so. They're uh, supporting your decision. Um, I, I I did want to post some Brian Brink for the Fly of the Concords fans. Uh, they call I, me love, I saw that and had a little giggle. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Is it because of my loud chewing? <laughs> um, uh, Brian Big just finished his taxes ten minutes ago. Oh, good for you! Congratulations. Uh, I'm. He knows what's up. He needs. He needs that return. He needs <laughs> Uh, I, you know how uh, pain in the ass it is to go through all of the toys you bought in the past year and get all the receipts <laughs> for them and realize how much money you spent on toys you don't need to uh, try you to just, get write offs you for your YouTube them. channel. You do need them. They're they're therapy. They make you feel good. They like, are. We need to get our oil changed and stuff, but like, you know, that's that's because we need to get around back to work and the growth stuff. But you gotta you gotta feed the soul and, and reward yourself for all the hard work you're doing. I see someone uh, made a comment from Canada. Uh, Adam's from Canada, and uh, we're using Fulfill Right to get all these figures out to to everyone, um, and we're actually gonna be sending out the international orders first. Um, no, but so he's, ta he's talking about how our tax returns don't come in till May. Oof. Oh, is that what he was talking about? A lot easier I didn't even know y'all pay taxes. Oh, yeah, ours is pretty easy. Right. Is it just, do they just take it and then that's it? You don't have to like submit it and then they quiz you and they're like, uh uh, you did it wrong. So you have to pass more. a test I to get it. your money back? No, it's just you have to. <laughs> no. You, it's it's a there's mess, a means. That's a whole other there's a ours means. Ours is pretty straightforward, like, uh, yeah. Like, you better pay us this money or you're going to go to jail. And they're like, okay, well, how much money do we have to pay? And we're like, we don't know. And they're like, okay, well, here's this much. And they're like, that's is not it enough. cats? Here's is the meme two cats meowing at each other? No, pretty much. It should be. That. It should you, be. You, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it is the, okay, you have to pay us taxes, which is fine. But it's just like, well, how much do we owe? Well, you need to figure that right? out on your own and your you own without it. knowing what the rules are yeah without knowing all the rules and then right. if you screw it up they come after you to get yeah. more it's <laughs> such a racket like i'm i'm guessing canada is very easy like here's what it's you owe. pretty now, straightforward yeah, yeah exactly totally racket it's such a pain so at the end of the day don't you want to escape with a 650 yeah. <laughs> animal warriors of the kingdom uh, to escape listen, your you only family. live one responsibility that's true you do yeah. only live once gotta, and on that note daniel get that epic Dan all in yep i love and it daniel quay pointed out um uh, my his wife just in or their wife just informed them that they don't have 640 dollars. and so did you not see the stephen shanks comment don't worry we've got you covered you won <laughs> <laughs> an epic all in <laughs> Wink. Uh, um, Amanda, ha, ha, I am that wife as well. I'm actually on her <laughs> side. <laughs> you know what? Well, you listen, do you don't have to go after all in. You can, which is you can get, there's well. other, plenty of other options, a lot from, from the smallest to the largest. Uh, yes. uh, there should be anyway. something for everyone as far as like the role words are. Well, I'll, I'll put a link again in the chat to either buy or not buy, uh, depending on whose spouses but are watching this buy. right now. 
Uh, but definitely by uh, <laughs> and, and and back, um, uh, gentlemen. Any any final thoughts here? Uh, you know, if you if you want to jump on next week too, that's that's fine. Uh, uh, but any final awesome. thoughts here? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, this week. I, I think we mentioned it a couple of times, but you know, you really don't get billed until the seventeenth, so there's no reason not to go ahead and back now. Uh, help us keep up the momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Everyone likes to back a winning horse, and it seems like we're we're making nice, steady progress to unlock. I'm making Ravens. a horse. That doesn't mean we we're making a horse. <laughs> confirmed horses. Confirmed. No, not yet. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Changing the thumbnail now. How, how's your shoe taste there, Jason? <laughs> Um, well, on that note, I will also just say like part of this here tonight and a bunch of streams, I don't know if folks have been paying attention, but it's been, um, it, it really has been like a tour kind of like helped to set up this sort of like promo tour across different toy, toy collector channels and podcasts. And so we've, we've been doing a lot of streaming and talking with people because we want people to know about the campaign. This is the time where we got to really accelerate and get that curve going up reminder. Like you see it there on, on the you want On that the Brian Brain stick. chart, yep. The, I mean, the nice thing is technically it's it's a longer campaign, so we do have more days to keep to that regular pattern, so mm -hmm. it'll be a little bit wider. Um, but I do want to like uh, let people know that tomorrow on Cato collection on Cato's collection, uh, we will be doing a stream again, to, and we will be revealing some things that have yet to be seen. Ooh. So we'll be looking at the. Um, the alt heads for the women and they are amazing um they are amazing so that's tomorrow the same mad hatter but i challenge the awok boys and the harmful toys to come on mad hatter channel on friday do they dare ah a challenge <laughs> um deal hmm, that's we interesting were be on thursday that's what i thought so <laughs> i was gonna say friday are you trying to reschedule if so <laughs> hmm. but maybe we should check our calendars <laughs> is what i was about to say by the way <laughs> I was about to say tomorrow on Kato's collection, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tomorrow night on the collection Nexus at 8 p.m. Pacific. Then I thought Thursday over at Mad Hatter. But if you need to change it, we can. And then Sunday for now on Toy Connections. And there are a couple of other good, uh, awesome channels that we're going to be jumping on that just haven't yet confirmed. So look out for it. Look out for it. Boom. Boom. Uh, we got a couple other toy things that I hit before we end this show. Oh. So feel free to stick around if you want to. We gotta talk Necroconda. We oh, gotta talk yes. uh, this news yeah, yeah. from Toy Collector Nacelle Toys doing Cowboys of Moo. Oh yeah, Mesa. Those Speaking of of uh, other animal action yep. figures, um, animal warriors. Uh, how how pumped are we to be getting Cowboys of Moo Mesa figures? This may surprise you, Jay, but this, this is kind cool. of in our wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, Cowboys of Mesa confirmed? I don't know. <laughs> that was the tier. Did you not? Like, you were supposed to. We're working with Nacelle. No, that's not. We're not. It's, we're not associated with this at all. But these, these are great. These are great. And oh, street boy. sharks. And, you know, all the other stuff. Like, there's, 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 there's a lot of similarly scaled anthropomorphic animal figure lines that, that you know, we're pretty excited about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, and uh, I I think out of all of the I mean, I've gotten a few of the um, uh, in, not what's the, the biker mice? No, what's the Robo insect one? Robots. Sect Sectar. Sectar. Oh, yeah, the, uh, Sectar. Thank Sectors. you. Good word. Yeah, sec Sectars. Sectars. Yes. Um, I've gotten those. I, that's the only one. But the Moo Mesa guys. Uh, if they're at if they're at John's shop and he has them there, I, I may pick some of those uh, up for sure. Uh, definitely need to talk about Necroconda because my Necroconda don't want none unless it's got <laughs> buns, honey. <laughs> oh my God! Look Ew. at this packaging. Um, Ooh, the looks, artwork like is glow in the dark wild. Too, right? It's glow in the dark. This is like the Snake Man version of Scare Glow, like uh, and. We've That's known about really this figure cool. for a while, but damn, does this artwork look fantastic. It does. It I'm a little awesome. sad at the caption above it that sort of says that it's a Walmart exclusive. Yeah, let's give it let's give it an official. No! <laughs> 
but um, especially it's I weird because that... the, the no <laughs> but it's especially weird because if that's the back art right that's not mm -hmm. normal like like retail well what, they've done that, they've had that with a few i think they did that with the no shoot you're right yeah, I was talking with Toy Sorcerers yesterday yeah. and the Toy Habits, and there's this, and then there's another piece of artwork with a bio of the, the sort of snake and describes it. It's like, well, where does that go? It felt yeah, more you... like a Mattel Creations like yeah. thing, which is I'm hoping that whoever – who is this? Toy News? Oh, Toy, Toy News Eye. Eye. I'm hoping JC's wrong maybe and that maybe it's a Mattel Creations thing because mm. all the packaging, cool. does it screams like collector – like packaging like some of the other mattel creations um roy I, I suarez need to order my, like, uh, my snout shared spell. The art there oh you Rick. know what the, this um this is a card that's inside it so that's inside the same as, oh it's yeah. an insert yep and that's what they've done ah, with some of the turtles figures and jay yeah. ruiner I'm so sorry. I'm no, so it's fine. Sorry. I was holding <laughs> hate to be was, this guy. I was holding on for hope. Okay, JC. JC wins. He's correct. <laughs> um but uh Damn I it. love that we're getting a snake bot tail to go with this figure. Like it's mm. just it just oh, it looks so good. So that so artwork. so artwork. So where's that next thing? When you scroll over one, what? Because we were looking at a work of art that had He-Man battling Snake Men. This is a whole Man, other wow, piece that of looks art awesome. of Man, it being looks born. So good. And if, at, if for folks who aren't familiar with the uh, the bio, what's really cool is that these are like you know snakes shed skin, mm -hmm. and so these are the shedded skin of Snake Men that get animated and That's brought cool to life. Hell. That's so cool. That's fun. I like that. But do you hear what I'm saying? Like, where's that all that artwork? Going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's like too much packaging. Well, yeah. So I like think. Hold out. Well, yeah. It's. I think you're getting what's on the back and the sides, and then all over the front Man, I, of the. I hmm. ordered the uh, the mm -hmm. Goddess Evil Inn, and I had the box for like months. I just threw it away, but it did it did have like a ton of uh, artwork like throughout, like it f unfolded. So it it might be something similar, but I mean, mm. looking at the package, it doesn't look like that. So who knows? Maybe but like really, or something? I don't know. But I, I really, it's it's, it's that it's figure. So good, yeah, it looks so good. Dude, the figure looks awesome. Man, yeah. it looks really good. We're I gonna take him out and play with the looks, figure, and that's it's it looks definitely phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, the only bummer is it's an army builder, exactly. but it's a Walmart exclusive army builder, which stinks. But exactly. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> yeah. I, I I'll do it again. Um, the. <laughs> at least the secondary market prices, at least with like Moss Man and stuff, haven't been insane on on Walmart. The only one that's been crazy is uh, yeah. uh, Duplico or whatever. But um, Duplico. But anyway, yeah, suave. Um, this thing is definitely special with that tail, with all the yep. body parts, all the weapons, and it's truly a cool glow in the dark. I should say that too. And yeah, yeah, it's glow clearly glow. a cool army builder. So mm -hmm. and it's get them at Walmart. <laughs> Go for it. It's yeah. it's metallic and it has like a sheen to it that yeah. just it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's um it's pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Nice. Hey, you go back to the like to, there there was somewhere they posted. Um, I was looking at this. Was it last night that we were talking about this? Or no, on Mega J the other day. Um, and they had a bunch of pictures. And when you scroll to the end, there's a there's a Skeletor and a um there was like more figures and i have no idea what those ones were oh i don't know either i i i do you know where it was posted uh i want to say toy news i toy newsy toys the website or yeah the, those, might, those might have been some of the other figures the artwork is that what you're referring to no it wasn't artwork it was oh. it was additional figures and i thought they were just showing it sort of next to a skeletor to sort of give a reference point but it was it was not a Skeletor that I had ever seen. And there was another figure that looked to be like another Stranger Things crossover. Was it? Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's his name? Um, the Vecna. Yeah, Vecna. We, we, uh, I think no, most of those got it wasn't, it Vecna. wasn't Vecna. Nope. Oh, well, it looked like it was using the, the, um, like the piece that they used for Moss the Gray Skull Moss Man. Yeah. But it was not 
it, it was not Grace. <laughs> it was not Grace Gull Mossman. Mm. Um, so I don't know what it was. I, I I assume it was a Stranger Things crossover. Oh, Jace in the chat says Skeletor and Demogorgon. Yeah, that's an oh, older. Oh, figure. that was like an like older one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like an older year, announced yeah. one. Adam, well, that's on. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, man, a brick knows. I just got into Origins recently, and when I see really? figures like this, I'm like, "What is this? Ooh. I don't even know what this is." And he he not only got in it recently, he got in fast, and he I went did go a little. Hard. He went hard. I went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, well, you I know, did. I wonder. I wonder. Does does because uh, Eternia? Like, you can't just easily buy an Eternia. One doesn't simply go into Mordor and get an Eternia. Mm. Mm. Um, so, like, what what what's your situation with Eternia then? Oh, I'm not getting Eternia. I don't have room for that. <laughs> <laughs> when I when it was well, then are you really going in hard? Okay. Not that hard. No. When that was announced, well, I was like, I was looking at it like, how to... do people put that anywhere? How does anybody put that anywhere? The thing's huge. Yeah, mine's still in the box. I haven't even opened it out of the shipper yet. One day I will. I'll get to it. Neil Hunter Hyde, ah, too cute. Welcome <laughs> to the Origins Club. Yeah, um, it's fun because I get to pick and choose from like all the stuff that's on clearance and people are practically given away. So it's it's great. And a, real quick, apologies from Jason. His hotspot just died. Oh, no. Well, it was fun having Jason on. Always fun yeah. chatting with him. Such a such a creative and innovative uh, a toy maker. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, and then just real quick, R.I.P. Rip, oh. G.I. Joe Ultimates Wave 6, canceled. Mm-hmm. Where's Kyle? Kyle, why? <laughs> I know he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't head up. Did he, G.I. did he know that this news item was coming and maybe he, he, <laughs> he, he canceled himself from the chat? No, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> It's sad. You don't want to face the because... hard questions, Kyle. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I, it's uh. It's a bummer. It. You know. Um. It's just one of those things. Like Super Seven has uh, pulled a few waves of of figures that didn't sell yeah. enough of them. This was a mm -hmm. tough one, though. It's mainly repaints and stuff, right? So it's it's entirely repaints, and it's and it and it's. Uh, I mean, if a wave of the GI Joe Ultimates was going to be canceled. I hate to say it, but this was going to be it. So you're saying you don't like women? Is yeah. That, why do you hate is that? What I heard? Uh, strong women specifically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> no. Man, no, I just, I mean, I think this is wave six and it's, and it's a full, we like a full repaint line. I think a full I, repaint yeah, wave is really true. bold. Yeah. This early, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like this is wave 37 and we've seen, at least yes. one version of everything these figures were in you know waves like three four and five kind of thing mm -hmm. so to to get this as a wave seems too soon in a way yep. um and they're not different enough that that i don't you know i just don't know i mean <laughs> i think i do know there just wasn't enough demand for this uh, yeah. which is why which is why it got canceled but i just yeah to me it is that you know you can't have a whole wave of repaints mm -hmm. even even if it was highly demanded figures like if you're not even putting glow in the dark on the damn thing like by, mm -hmm. uh, absence absent of that like mm -hmm. i don't know how you get away with a wave of repaints unless you somehow did something to completely ch i mean not eh, that won't be a repaint anymore if you added more tooling to it or something I mean, yeah, we have it's... some accessories and stuff that were going to be unique to these variants, sure. but still, like the points, the points that that makes sense. You know, I'm sure if people are invested in this line, th this could be the one that they opted to pass on, and so mm -hmm. the demand wasn't there. So, yeah, I yeah. think it might have to do with the fact that a lot of people might be backing the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Kickstarter, oh, and they just didn't it. have the funds. Right. Yeah. Right, right, which right. you know, totally understandable. People right. should be backing it, so it's, <laughs> you can't have um, everything. But it, and and speaking oh. of the money part of it, though, yeah, like it might be a hot take, but fifty five dollars a piece is too expensive for repaints. For a straight repaint, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's like I said, if we were if we were thirty waves in and people were completists, maybe. Yeah. Or, this, or you this missed early the is. one from thirty waves previous. And yeah. Now that's what, like yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Get that figure but you this, missed. You know, this isn't Tiger Force Roadblock you know five or six years after you know the mm -hmm. vintage roadblock right this is yeah. this is you know imagine if gi joe in the 80s did a wave and then turned around and did 
Tiger Force. People would yeah. be like, we just oh, got I, these figures. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, it yep. doesn't make sense. You, there needs to be more of a, a, a delay there. Um, or, you know, new tooling, whether it's yep. a new head or, you know, something that makes the figure unique. But I mm-hmm. just don't think there was enough of that there. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah, I just put some last thoughts in here. Um, where was it? Uh, don't call it where is it at here? Somebody said what you... Oh, here we go. No, Yeah, ha! There we go. I collect the slime if you can justify with repaints. Also, I was backing a Wave. Hey! Really I didn't even read that comment, but I was... Uh, I, was <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, thank you for... Nice. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for confirming my bias. Oh, uh, my God. Um, all right, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much uh, for closing out this show tonight. Uh, officially... Or unofficially a part of the of the AWOC crew, uh, uh, Brick something. You do streams, to, uh, toy news streams, uh, generally before this one on Sunday nights over on your channel on Brick something. Uh, Correct, uh, right. uh, what was it? It's like needless ephemera. What, what, what's your what's the Good news? job news? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. You, you had it. It's needless, needless ephemera. ephemera. We, saw. we saw. Yeah, that's it. And I'm, I love it, that. I usually try and end it so I can be here and watch. Um, but uh, I'm actually going to move him a little earlier. And so he, he starts off the day actually at two o'clock. And then I'm trying to actually move it a little earlier. This is Pacific time to maybe 345 in a couple of weeks. In two more weeks, I'm going to do that. I've got things scheduled with people at the 430 time. But that way I can actually be here on time and not skip roll call and walk in all ashamed. Yeah, because yeah, you're always like coming in after I do roll call. Just like, does Brick hate me or something? Jay's like, and that's it for tonight. Brick's like, what did I miss? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So uh, please go uh, check out both of your channels. Brick something highly articulated. Um, uh, Both, both great. And I think I've been on. Have I? I don't think I've been on. I've, no, I've been on. I've been on your. No, I've been out there. You've been on street. his. Yeah, you have I not been we, on yours. Yeah. You've been on on Adams. Not yet mine. Oh, damn, um, we gotta change that. And I no. I, and yes, I appreciate you for pointing out that you have invited me here, and I've never invited you yeah. there. What I'm just the a hell? big old. Jerk. So, no, it's fine. I, do uh, I, I know, don't even know, know where I am half the time, so per- <laughs> it's perfectly okay. Uh, Blake, you missed everything. We talked about your new cover reveal, we my did. friend. Um, Great reveal. For, uh, Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Um, but that's it. I, I, you know, I've seen this around the Rob Flynn stripped of his duties. Blah blah blah. I've seen that. Uh, I would love. You know, I, I know Kyle works for them, but I don't. I know he's not probably given permission to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I would love to have some Super 7 people. If they want to come on and talk about whatever that is, by all means, the door is open. Let me know. Uh, happy to talk about it. But I'm not, I, don't, I don't trade in Reddit posts and, and yeah. rumors unless I can kind of get some official response to uh, that. For what it's side. worse, I thank you for that, Jay. Because, like, again, we don't know. And it's just, I don't know. It feels unnecessary uh, to st- speculate and i just feel like it fuels unnecessary you know misconceptions yeah yeah so I when they can easily say it one way or another or, or yeah. give a whatever or if they even want to say no comment then no comment whatever um but anyway uh let me i gotta plus in the the patron credits uh real quick uh gotta big, give a big thanks to all of the patrons of the geek dad life universe um like wait i had a, a moo mesa reveal <laughs> um <laughs> uh great cover uh uh blake i'm kind of upset yeah. you didn't do it on on our show that's all i'm saying okay like <laughs> what the hell? i thought no, we had something i thought we did i thought it was really cool when we did the cover reveal I'm just well saying. it's because you were cheating on him with these other animal guys and so <laughs> He's mad at you. Wait, I want all of them, okay? I'm I'm, I'm jealous like that. I'm selfish. No, it I'm could be it could be like a segment, you know, like every time there's a new cover. There yeah, exactly. A Come on in. Come on yeah. in and premiere it. Uh, thanks to all of these patrons you're seeing right now uh, run across uh, my screen. It's $5 or more a month. Gets you access to the After Dark show, which I'll show you in a second. The thumbnail for that should be a fun one tonight. Um, and then name in the credits, uh, access to our Discord, which... 
uh both of y'all are are in uh the discord yeah so it's it's a ton of fun it's like the live chat but in real life all the time and um yeah Truly that's it. all the time yeah all the time oh thumbnail for that one sorry i didn't, almost didn't share it uh almost ecto glow elite <gasps> and who did i get those ecto glow figures from <gasps> <laughs> Can I guess? Sure. Should I guess now or should I yeah, guess go, after? Yeah, go guess now, yeah. It, was, was it a certain Mr. Goldberg yep. was involved? You know how I know that? How? Because we were at we were at Toyland at the <laughs> table next to the table that he bought them from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think I bought Witness. this from him before he bought those. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes. I'll tell the whole story. <laughs> On Geek Dad Life After Dark, come hang out there. Uh, Brick, Adam, thank you so much. Until next time, hasta luego, and goodbye. Bye. Whoa, Thanks, everybody. Do it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not working. No love. We might be hands on now. There. Blow. You used to put it up like that. No, but that's the effect, dude. Like, oh, do you see that? Like, yeah, okay. you gotta wait for it. You gotta wait for the hearts. Yeah. I like this one too. PYT, a little no, maybe, maybe. Uh, oh, we're just going to play with this for a while, folks. So <laughs> have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Until next time, hasta luego. And goodbye.